So here you go, distance from the earthquake, and here's T waves, they're the fastest, right? That's the first thing that's going to get to you. And then here's S waves, so it takes longer for the S waves to get there for any given distance. And here's surface waves. Notice, when you're here, within a few hundred kilometers of an earthquake, the S waves and the surface waves are basically not distinguishable from one another, but they are distinguishable from the P wave. And this this difference in time is sort of linear with the with the distance that you are from an earthquake. So for a regional earthquake, it's actually pretty easy to, to, to do this exercise. So if you observe, you got a seismogram, you observe the P wave arrival, and just as an example here, let's say it arrives at four minutes and fifteen seconds, the S wave arrives at 8 minutes, then you get this 3 minutes and 45 seconds. And if you look at this, 3 minutes and 45 seconds only fits one place on here. And so that defines for you where the earthquake was, how far away it was from that one station. And, and here's the classic diagram that you see. You need three stations to draw the circles around in order to find the intersection point, which tells you where the earthquake was. And on a globe, well, it's not circles, right? Earth's not flat, so the trigonometry is a little more complicated, but the idea is the same. Three circles around three seismic stations tells you where the epicenter was. 